as a leader in healthcare, you really need to understand the finances behind because best practice to only negotiate once you have a written job offer. Because what made you decide on pursuing an MBA as a nurse? My dad is in business and I grew up in that. For me, my first year as a nurse here back in Chicago was I autumn. This was like 2007, 2008. This, there was a recession, right? I noticed that my immediate leaders in the department was struggling with managing budget. Like what I mean by that is how do you manage labor? Like how do you flex people? Like for example, in the ER, low census, meaning send someone home because the census was low. And then later on it gets busy, then you're short staffed. In the bigger scheme of things, did we really solve anything, right? It was interesting for me because even from a supply management standpoint, we were missing supplies. And we were wasting a lot, but then we're missing. And how do you manage that? How do you measure, like, how much do you really need? How much do you utilize? And especially those perishable goods. How do you do project management? A lot of those things are back then were not taught in MSN programs. It's not bad, but I realized early in my career that in order to be successful as a leader in healthcare, you really need to understand the finances behind, because it's how you utilize those resources that can provide you with a better way to support your team. For example, if you're, you know, requesting for additional staff, it's important to, to understand, well, how, how does the senior leadership view that staffing? What, what are their measures of success? If you don't understand that as a leader, then it will be very difficult to provide extra additional resources for your team. Because like, for example, when you're doing variance explanation, if you're off budget, they don't necessarily teach that in master's in nursing. They teach you the ethics and the theories, which is also good. But for me at that time, uh, I, I saw the value of learning the business of healthcare. And then I could supplement that with nursing ish stuff with courses and reading books and all that. But fundamentally, it was key for me to get an MBA so I, I can understand how the senior leaders think and so I can better represent my team. I 100% agree with that because I, when I was getting my master's in health leadership, I didn't get any education on finances or the business side of how hospitals or clinics, nursing homes operate. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, as you mentioned, we learn about nursing ethics and theories and management negotiation. We can touch on that, but not the backbone of the operations in healthcare. I think a lot of nurses should be more versatile and learn different facets of how healthcare as a whole operates. As Filipino uh, who moved from the Philippines, what do you think about the Filipino nursing communities in the States? Because I personally thought that. They are very tight need, help each other out uh, when they work, whether it's in the unit or living in general in the States. Good observation. Yeah, generally, Filipinos are tight knit and there are a lot of Filipinos in the country, in the U.S. And it's also you know, important to recognize that Philippines, although it's smaller from size perspective compared to the U.S. geographically, you know, it's separated with different islands. With that comes with different ethnic culture. Although there's a general culture, right? Each area where you came from, you have your own tight knit community. It's important to recognize that as well. But for me, it's really refreshing to work with Filipinos because you know, they understand your culture. And, and also a big part of that too, is that familiarity of, you know, that this person works hard. You know, that this person generally supports families, whether here or in the Philippines, they would go above because a big part of that is their responsibilities and hardworking in general. It's good to, to find support and, and they're very helpful relating to people about family and all that. And that's one thing that I could say that it's, it's very close to from a family perspective. And then they're a good resource as far as asking for help from a personal standpoint as well. Could you explain how nurse managers are salaried and how it progresses over time? For being a manager, you're supervisory, right? The term is exempt. Uh, so those who are providing clinical care or direct patient care. They're usually non-exempt, meaning they're hourly. For salary, 
you start off with a base salary. You know that once you get an offer for a job. And depending on the organizations, their organizations have merit-based incentives. I would say for those who are interested in stepping into a nurse leadership role, or if you are about to step into a leadership role, it's important to get a coach for negotiation of your compensation. Also, if you don't have that, you can always do, do your research because generally there is a range for nurse managers depending on experience and such but oftentimes we get stuck with the number the salary but we neglect to see that the compensation package comprises of your benefits your paid time off your retirement etc there are a lot of components to a compensation package that you can negotiate so not just a salary and that's also sign on bonus There's also relocation bonus if you qualify for that, if you live a certain number of miles away. When you're coming in, that's why in the interview, it's important to understand what they're actually looking for and how you can fill that need, solve the problem, or even provide better value. So when it comes to negotiation, that's how you can leverage yourself when you get your salary that's it pretty much and then you have your yearly increase and then if you have a merit uh, incentive program that's on top of your yearly increase depending on the the company's performance now it's also important to note when you get hired or about to get hired to ask what are the goals for this year for each year what are your strategic goals because that's how you can prepare yourself which task or things to prioritize that connects to a strategic goal for the organization. For example, patient experience or a growth goal or a safety in that regard. Now, safety is a big umbrella in your department. Is it barcode scanning for medication administration, right? Or is it decreasing fall rates? So it's important to note that because that's going to come out at the end of the year for your performance evaluation, whether or not you'll get your merit incentive. We often forget that we have more than salary or hourly rate, right? So we have this whole pie of benefits or Mm. tuition reimbursement, uh, PTO, but we often forget. So that's a great tip. Mm -hmm. Could you uh, tell us in a ballpark what the number is for the salary? I know it's like difficult to say in the States. Generally in the West Coast, depending on the market, I would say they usually start off with 120 to 130 as a newer leader. In addition to what I said earlier, is that it's important to do a market research, a cost of living comparison. There are states that don't have any state income tax, like Washington and Texas, as opposed to California, who you may earn more, but then you have higher taxes in that regard. So it's important to do your research. What is a comparable research on what does a manager of nursing starting would be in this geographical area? Think of market. Because California is a big market, right? For example, farming area of of California, critical access hospital would have a different market as opposed to the Bay Area in San Francisco, right? Because of cost of living comparison. When you're doing market analysis, research it based on market. So Bay Area or the east part of California or Seattle area or Spokane area, which is the east part of Washington. There's a lot of resources online that you can research. There's forums don't shoot yourself in the foot by saying a specific number before you interview. A lot of times recruiters ask you this. I was just asked yesterday, (laughs) people want to hire me as a director of the ED and they asked me, what rate would you be feasible for you? You don't have to answer that question because by saying so, you're locking yourself in. The good safe response is I generally don't talk about salary until after the interview until after we determine if this is a good fit but i will welcome any reasonable offer that is commensurate to my experience period that is usually the for me my response by you're non-committal but you are open to a reasonable offer matching your experience you'd like to go through the interview first because you want to know what their problems are you don't want to get locked into a rate definitely not a specific 
rate. Often in hospital applications for nurses, it asks you what the salary that you want. Not that you are going to get that number, but it's mm-hmm. important that what you said to not lock you in that salary. Mm-hmm. I learned in negotiation that you have to anchor. So you have to like throw a yes. number and like you start from there. Like if you want 100K, you want to go 120, for example, like more than what you want. But that's a good advice what you said not to be committal, but have yes. it as a negotiation room. Yeah, going through negotiation classes myself, best practice to only negotiate once you have a written job offer, because that's legally binding. If you don't have an offer, even if it's, yeah, you're hired, but then you don't really have written job offer, doesn't mean anything. I mean, it may, but then again, you wait for the uh, the other response to that too, that I may, if you get asked on like, hey, we, we, would you be comfortable in this rate? Well, you know, you can ask, okay, hey, do I, did I get the job? When can I get the job offer? Because you want a written job offer before you talk numbers. And Miles, you have a lot of things in your plate. Uh, I know uh-huh. you run a podcast called the Insight Wellness Leader. Mm-hmm. Could you tell us about the projects you have in going right now? Primarily, I do the podcast. I host and produce the Insightful Nurse Leader. It started off as a podcast by nurse leaders for nurse leaders. But then again, as I interviewed more people, I noticed that there were people in the healthcare space who are not necessarily nurses listened to my podcast and reach out to me. And I started interviewing people who are not nurses, like a risk manager or insurance broker and a career transition coach. Now it's centered around how can I help people who work in healthcare support each other. And through this difficult time, truly these authentic conversation I find very valuable because conversely, how I compare my podcast to others, based on my research, is that other nurse leader podcasts or yes, nurse podcasts in general talk about clinical stuff or their specific shift, making things comical like joint commission and all that. But for me, I talk about the profession. I talk about the specific experiences of people who went through a big change in healthcare and really dig deeper on their specific insights. And that's, it just lights me up because that's really something that others want to hear. I hear a lot of People comment or message me about how different my podcast is, which lights me up. The the other thing that I'm doing is that I'm working on an online learning course about helping newer nurse leaders in the emergency department better manage their productivity, how do they build staffing grids, how do they balance their position control, and how do they manage their daily productivity on a day-to-day basis so they can better provide support for their team. Thirdly, I'm working on building a PLLC on a nurse group where similar to physician group, once you work with this group as a nurse, we are exclusively staffing a service line of a hospital, for example, the ER. And the value proposition here is that there is ownership for the nurse to be in the group. There is also merit-based performance pay based on your performance rather than just get coffee cards or free meals in the cafeteria. This is how you really reward your top performers. And the value proposition for hospitals is we take over the headache of recruiting and the hiring and performance management, et cetera. Really it's basing on outcomes. That's how we do our co- similar to provider three physicians. It's not necessarily a novel idea, but it's really providing more ownership to nurses so they can really get rewarded to truly rewarded for the performance that they do on a daily basis, basing on an agreed upon metrics for the hospital. What you said about the merit base, I think that's a great idea that we need to have ownership in the organizations we practice and operate. You know, it's like buying a share of Tesla or Apple who innately get interested in how they operate Mm -hmm. and how they're doing financially. If the audience wants to meet you online, where can they find you? I am on LinkedIn, Miles Perilla, that's uh, M-Y-L-E-S-P-A-R-I-L-L-A. I I also have a website. It is milesperillaconsulting.com. My contact is there as well. You can reach me through there. And my podcast name is The Insightful Nurse Leader. Whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Amazon, you can find me there.